Hello and welcome to North Country Matters. My name is Donna Seymour. I'm a member of the St. Lawrence County League of Women Voters, one of the civic partners for our show. Today we are doing a conversation with a candidate and the candidate we have in is Chad Colbert. Chad is the incumbent St. Lawrence County Legislator for uh, District 11 and with me in the studio is Bess Kearney from AAUW St. Lawrence County to help with our questions. Chad, welcome back to North Country Matters. You came in four years ago when your seat was an open seat, so we had an opportunity to talk to you. And I want to take just a second to show folks the uh, map of District 11, and it takes in uh, a small part of the village and town of Potsdam and the town of Stockholm. Um, conversations with candidates are designed to provide voter education that thoughtfully and civically discusses issues of public policy and governance in our community. They are nonpartisan, and we ask the candidate to come in and, and talk about his positions, his records, and ideas without the 30-second soundbite of a campaign ad and without the discussion constraints that are often found in a debate. An invitation was extended to both candidates for this position, and we'll host the other candidate a little bit later in this series. So, Beth is going to get us started, Chad. All right. Welcome. Thank you. And I am curious about what inspired you to first run for the county legislature. And uh, we'll so, the first time I ran, it mostly had to do with the financials of the county. Um, I was asked to run, and uh, I thought it's a good opportunity to utilize talent, skills I feel I may have that can to help the county. Instead of being a complainer about how things are going, I decided to try to do a little something about it. So once you got the seat, what surprised you the most? <laughs> Actually, I became... You, you think when you first get in there, you're going to do all these things. Well, and, and, and I still have hopes and dreams of doing things that, that I you know, haven't quite been able to do yet, but um, it does require a lot of meetings, um, uh, what's the word, I'm, gaining consensus. Uh, the process is very, very slow in accomplishing almost anything because there's committees, there's meetings, there's you know all these different interested parties that you have to get the okay from. Uh, but since uh, being in office, I've actually learned to appreciate that because that's really what democracy is all about, is giving everybody a voice in whatever we're trying to do. So uh, while it might be slow and it might be frustrating at times, it's uh, sure it'd be easier to have a king and he could just make a decision in a, in a second. But we want to get a voice from everybody. And of course, it does slow the process down. But at least we're getting that voice from everybody at the table. And we can therefore make a more informed decision. So it is a deliberative process. And, yes. and it must be, as you said, very time consuming. It can be time consuming. It can be frustrating at times. Yeah. But, I, but I think it's, I've learned to appreciate it because of the reasons I, I've stated earlier. Absolutely. And, and uh, if, you, if you can narrow it down, what, what do you think are the three most critical issues that you see the county uh, board of legislatures that, that you, you can and should address? Um, four years ago, obviously, it was the financials. The financials were a clear to me that you know there, there was holes in the hull of the ship, and the ship was going down if there, those holes weren't patched. Uh, and those holes have been, I think, for the most part, patched. We've, we've righted the ship. So now we can, I think, begin to focus on some other things while not taking the focus off the financials. We still need to maintain some pretty strict fiscal discipline because that's what I think taxpayers deserve. It's their money, it's not ours. Um, aside from that, there's a couple things that I, that I feel uh, need to be addressed. One is our roads and bridges. We have an infrastructure, I wouldn't say crisis yet, but there's some issues uh, that need to be addressed. I think we can address that without raising taxes at all. I think funds are available. If we uh, continue to manage the budget correctly, I think we can do it. Um, uh, another thing I think we need to address is, I, I've mentioned this I think before, is my wife and I are involved in, uh, in foster care. And as a uh, part of doing foster care, we see, um, especially the chemical dependency, the drug addiction issues uh, in this county. It is destroying families, and it's costing taxpayers a lot of money mm -hmm. to take care of these people who are addicted to drugs, as well as those innocent bystanders, children in particular, who are affected by what the, the adults are doing. 
So we need to address that, and I think we are trying to address that through, obviously the county has a, a community services department which has a mental health unit and a chemical dependency unit. unit. Um, and, and we need to uh, do as, as best we can in bolstering that department and supporting that department. We did get a recently, well fairly recently, a department head in there who I think is doing a much better job than, uh, than has been done in the past. So I think that's, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing uh, results that he might be able to bring to this, uh, to this problem because it is, it's become a problematic. And, you know, I was telling my son, my son is, he's a very smart kid, uh, which, hey, I don't, I don't know if he gets that from me or not, but he's a really smart kid. But he, he, he is always, he, he thinks about different, even, you know, global issues kind of thing. And I, I try to point out to him, a lot of problems can be linked back to economics in one way, shape, or form. Oh. And even the drug and mental health issues, I think, in, in some ways can be linked back to economics. Mm -hmm. I mean, if people are, they lose their jobs or maybe they're underemployed, that has an effect on a person's psychology. Um, and they may turn, it, cause, it can cause them psychological pain, hurt, whatever, and they may turn to substances uh, and abuse and become an abuser because they are psychologically affected by uh, the economic events of, uh, of the area. Yeah. So I think everything kind of works together and you can't you know, work on one without working on the other. You kind of need to work on everything together. So you work on the economy of the area and hopefully that helps even the mental health and, and chemical dependency issues as well. All right. So that's... Uh, and, and you're right. There are a lot of um, there are a lot of interlinks in that side, and particularly in a, in, a, in, a, in a county like ours, where there's a lot of underemployment, a lot of low wage employment. It's very difficult for people to make ends meet, and that actually brings us to our next topic, which is the social safety net. And as you know, uh, the uh, social services department um, that takes a big chunk of the budget, but you also are aware, as you just described, of real needs that are out there for people. So let's talk a little bit about um, the social services part of the budget and about the people who are really in a lot of economic distress and need help. So how do you, um, how do you think the county should focus on these issues and when, we, when it comes to distributing money through the budget, how do you look at these, these kinds of issues in terms of uh, budget priorities, Chad? Well, so much of what social services does is uh, state mandated anyways. Uh, if if uh, somebody comes in and they, they actually, they do, I believe they do it all online now, but if they, uh, if they qualify for benefits, the county has to provide those benefits. Um, uh, and I pretty much the details of how that all works out, social services is a very complicated department uh, because there's reimbursement from the state, even the federal level, I, I, uh, there's some reimbursements at, on, at that level as well. Um, and uh, we have an excellent, you couldn't ask for a better uh, DSS commissioner in there with Chris Rodiz. He is, he's got the biggest heart he and he, he is an excellent, excellent commissioner. Uh, and he does a very, very good job of doing that. But it's, uh, as far as the details of it, I try, my approach to leadership, I guess, I don't consider myself any great leader, but my approach has been, you know, very hands off. I set a vision, I set it, you know, the board, we set a vision, we set, you know, here's the direction we want to go. Now you guys, you department heads, you county administrator, you figure out all the details involved in getting us to go there. Um, and whatever that entails, we will say yay or nay on it. And uh, for the most part, when Chris Rodiz, you know, he's, because he's such a good, what he does, I think he does a good job at, at uh, as commissioner. I generally support, you know, most of his ideas. I would like to see within social services, um, well, there are resources, and this is not something I'm, I'm, I'm still kind of uh, going back and forth in my own mind, and, and perhaps Chris and I, maybe we could find some time to discuss this a little further. Uh, would adding more resources to social services actually bring down the costs of the overall department? And by that, I mean there are some folks who might be on social services, or, well, I'll go back to foster care. There are kids in foster care who might be there longer than they need to be because you know parents whoever might be willing to adopt but they can't adopt yet because social services is so bogged down with other work they just don't have time to get to it uh, and it might be months before they can adopt so i'm wondering i i would i would be very interested to see if we added resources would it actually bring down total costs 
Mm -hmm. Long term. Right? Long term. What do you bring out for a cost long term? Solving the, pro the problems in the lives of those children should be everybody's priority, right? Yeah, because if you get kids, if you help these people, kids, you know, obviously kids I, I, I feel for the most, but even, even adults and young adults, if you help them early enough, they become so much less of a burden on society later on. And they actually can contribute, obviously, to society <laughs> later on. So yeah, absolutely. Long term, we need to look more long term. Politics is not very good at looking long term. Uh, there's uh, some truth to that. But you mentioned yes. a word that I want to follow up on in, in your discussion, and you said your vision yes. for the county. Let's talk a little bit about what your vision is, because okay. really that's what a lot of the board work is yes. from your point of view, isn't it? Is yes. setting that vision. So what is your vision for St. Lawrence County, Chad? It's uh, it's mostly uh, keep the financial, be fiscally responsible. Keep the budget within reason. I will never, never vote to raise taxes above the tax cap. I would like to see them go the other way. And in actuality, last year we did tax, county property taxes did go down a little bit. And the, the proposed budget, at least we haven't approved it yet, but the proposed budget actually lowers taxes a, a little bit this year as well. So that's the direction I would like to go. So mostly for me, it's a vision of fiscal responsibility. Let's provide the services we need to provide, uh, and whatever that means, um, within Here's how much money we have to do to, to, to work with. So let's provide these services with this much money, period. Uh, and that's and and you know we've been able to, with that mandate, we've been able to increase fund balance. When I came in, it was negative about three million, a little little more than uh, negative two point eight million, something like that. Uh, and now it's ten, fourteen million, something like that. So uh, because we've been pretty strict about saying, hey, look, we need to put money back in our savings account. Essentially, is what that mm -hmm. is. Uh, and then there's other, you know, we have all these other services we actually, you know, we've been ignoring for a little too long and we need to, uh, we need to address. So. Okay, good, thank you. So, I'd like to bring up something that you named as a priority and that is infrastructure, roads and bridges. And uh, uh, New York State has about 1,800 bridges in need of repair, not all of them. <laughs> <Thank goodness. laughs> yes, right. Um, but New York rates 14th in the country for the percentage of bridges deemed to be in poor condition and the 10th highest in actual numbers, okay? So that's about 10.5% of all the bridges in the state. Are deficient. Are deficient, yeah. yeah. And we're also talking about roads and so on. Um, but in a large rural county like ours, the, the county government's responsible for the bridge and, and road repair. What, what is the state of, of the roads and bridges here, and, and how do we fix and maintain our county infrastructure and pay for it? Don Chambers, our, our county <coughs> highway superintendent, uh, has given us a couple of presentations on um, the state of our roads and bridges. And I, if I remember right, and my memory is not as good as it used to be, I think he, he said about 40% of our roads and bridges are deficient, which is a lot. Um, uh, level deficiency, that, that varies, obviously. And you'd have to, I don't know if that 40%, I think it's, if I remember right, that's, that's the accurate number. We do get some funding from the state. Uh, uh, to help with uh, infrastructure uh, repairs and, and such. Um, and I would hope that uh, some of the figures you just mentioned is good uh, um, ammunition, if you will, I guess, to get the state to do a little bit more to help its counties fix some of these roads and bridges. But that aside, if they don't, I still think there are ways we can budget our monies such that we can address our road and bridge issues uh, with our current resources, well not current, but resources that we have coming. I don't think we have to raise taxes, I don't think we're going to have to cut services substantially to get to get to uh, to where we need to be with our roads and bridges. And I think there are, you know, there's there's even uh, potential, and I, I don't know, I've looked into this, I, 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 I should say, but you know, potentially sharing services with towns, for example. You know, county roads run through all the towns, obviously, and, and if we need to, you know, replace a bridge in Stockholm, for example, Maybe the town employees, the town highway department, can act as some of the labor to help fix that bridge or replace that bridge. That would save some some costs, or could save <laughs> save some costs. Mm -hmm. So, but I think I, I'm confident it can be done. But it needs to be again this fiscal responsibility. We need to have a discipline 
uh, you know, we're going to spend or we're going to allocate this much for our roads and bridges every year. We're not going to deviate from that. We're not going to spend it on something else. If somebody comes in and says, oh, you cut my program, I need some money. No, we need to exercise self-control and discipline and say, no, this money was set aside for this purpose. We're going to use it for this purpose and stick to it. And, and so I, I assume there is some long-term plan? There is. Well, yes. That's uh, Don Chambers would know more about that. I don't... Trying to remember, he, he even gave us a little booklet, but it was a little while ago. But uh, but yeah, he's and it, obviously the the order priority is going to be the worst, right. the most heavily traveled bridges and roads will be will triage. Be addressed first. Yeah, exactly, oh, it's yeah. kind of a triage. It's, yeah. Yeah, that's a good word for it. Absolutely. All right. Yeah. Thank you. Well, I want to go back to the issue of taxes, Chad, because the state did give us some good news in terms that the Comptro comptroller's office took St. Lawrence County yes. off their. Um, Fiscally stressed list, yes, which is another, is a big, yes, uh, big deal that, that is a big deal, and and you know, and as you mentioned, that the uh, taxes, uh, property taxes, went down last year, and you're hoping that the same will happen this year when you mm -hmm. pass your new budget. Yes, but that and and you mentioned that you want to keep uh, property taxes under the two percent cap, but taxes still go up. They do. And for example, in St. Lawrence County, we went from a three to a four percent tax so rate. And that's within the last four years when you've been on the board. So talk to us a little bit about why the board felt that was important and how you feel about that, especially because sales tax hits the bottom part of the um, economic ladder the hardest because they can't defer their yachts <laughs> and their airplane purchases. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sales tax, it, you know, that that's it. I hate raising taxes anywhere, but sales tax to me seemed the most appropriate. One, because you know you don't pay sales taxes on food. So people buying food, if they're buying necessary food for themselves, okay, sales tax doesn't affect them. Uh, but if you're buying, I don't want to say the luxuries, but, uh, but in some sense, if you're buying uh, items besides food, then yeah, you're gonna pay sales tax. So people who spend more are gonna pay more in, uh, in sales taxes. So and it is a kind of a person can somewhat control to a certain extent. I know what you what you've said. I realize people still have to buy stuff, but to a certain extent, I can um, change or control my spending habits, but I can't change or control my property taxes. My property taxes are this county says what I have to pay, the town say what I have to pay, the, the school say what I have to pay. But sales taxes, if I don't like sales taxes, then I don't buy as much. Or maybe I buy, you know, in another county whose sales tax rate might be seven percent instead of eight percent. Um, uh, and and well, we used to be that low cost tax, and we're not. We I mean, I think we're the same as everybody yeah, around us now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So going somewhere else really isn't it an option. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they really could do an online option. or something like that, but yeah. uh, but then that cuts out the local merchants. So you don't want to see that happen yes, either, does. because yes, then. Does. That sales tax comes back mm -hmm. to some of the communities uh, mm -hmm. when it's you know it can be it can be shared with them, but not if it goes out of state. Right. right. So yeah, I'm not. I, I mean, I would rather see sales tax rate go up than property tax rate. Uh, I think property taxes, lower property taxes, I think would do more for economic development than lower sales taxes. Mm -hmm. Well, and you mentioned um, that food is a necessity, and that we don't charge sales tax on food. But St. Lawrence County charged a sales tax on fuel oil, yes. which is a huge necessity yeah, in this like county that. for like five or six yeah, months out of the year. Like New York State doesn't charge it. So talk to us about that. Uh, I don't like that. Uh, if that's something uh, we can, uh, perhaps that's something we can get rid of because I, I don't agree with that. I think that is something because, again, that affects, I think that is a very uh, regressive tax, mm -hmm. uh, even more so than sales tax. Um, uh, you cannot go without heating oil in the wintertime, most folks up here anyways. Uh, so yes, that is something I think we should uh, we should address. Absolutely. And the other side of that is is that so much of the housing stock in St. Lawrence County is not where it should be either. It's right. old, it's right. not always as insulated as it should be, right. it's not energy efficient. So though people who can't afford to upgrade their house, they're Are doubly more. being they're yeah. doubly being um, right. hit with that tax. Right. Right, absolutely. So yeah, that, that's something we need to, now that you, that's something that's another focus we should or take a look at is that... Uh, well, we're happy things. to increase your vision, sir. <laughs> <laughs> you just think about it. And that is something we, we had looked at a while back and, and didn't decide to take any action just yet, but, uh, but I think we... Well, as you we get your fiscal do. house in order, that we might be a place where you could do some real, uh, yeah. some real good for folks. Absolutely. Okay. Yep. Yeah. 
And uh, fiscally speaking, I, I have no idea what percentage of the county budget is devoted to employees. But I don't want to put you on the spot. <laughs> what I, I want to ask, oh, go ahead. okay, is in your mind, uh, do you think the county has too many, too few, or, or just the right number of employees? You know, that's a good question. Um, uh, employees, I, I know more, well, I don't even know the numbers necessarily by department, but, you know, I, I know, you know, who the biggest departments are as far as costs and, and that sort of thing. Uh, but by, you know, how much does the employees cost the county overall, I don't know that. But I do know, obviously, employees are probably the biggest expense of the county because, you know, we have close to 700 and some employees. Okay. One of the bigger employers in the uh, in the county, if not the biggest. Uh, do we have too many, too few, just right? I don't know that, uh, and I don't want to pretend to know that. I leave that for the county administrator. Uh, you know, I, I've told her, you know, we've, we've let her know that we want to stay, we want a budget that stays within the tax cap every year. Uh, if that requires more, less, fewer, whatever employees, that's up to her to do, and we will, we will make those decisions as she presents those, that information to us. This year, in this year's budget, taxes are going down, or the, the proposed budget, I should say. Because uh, we haven't we haven't uh, voted on it yet, but the um, property taxes will be county property taxes will be going down, and I believe we're adding five five mm -hmm. positions. Um, so, but the trend in employees has been going down. Now, we do have our county employees to thank for that. Really, I mean, they do deserve a big. I, I, in my opinion, they deserve a pat on the back or a round of applause because we have been asking them to do more with less for the the four years I've been on the board, and that's not fair to continue to do that. Uh, they do need to have, uh, you know, they need the resources to do their jobs. Um, uh, but so far, I think they're, I think they've done a, a really, really good job. Uh, I have to commend all the county employees for for, the, for a job well done. Uh, but I will leave that to the county, you know, the county administrator and her budget team to decide how many employees we need. Uh, mm -hmm. That's she definitely has her her uh, hand on that pulse a heck of a lot better than, than any of us on the board would. All right, yeah. all right. Now, given what you were saying about social services, uh, do, do the caseworkers have, do you, in, to the best of your knowledge, are they overloaded? Do they have too many clients to really effectively deal with their needs? I don't, I, I can't say that I know that either. Uh, again, that would be a good question for uh, Chris Rudis, the mm -hmm. DSS commissioner. Um, and I think he has given us reports in the past. And when he is, actually, I think in DSS, the, the um, caseload is state mandated. They want to see, you know, you can only have, you know, X number of cases per uh, caseworker and that sort of thing. And we, you know, we have to stay within that. Uh, within that range, and I think it is a somewhat of a range. Yeah, yeah. Um, so again, if Chris Radiz feels he needs more people, he can come to us and make the case, and we'll say yay or nay. So you uh, trust him to, to I trust. Yeah. I trust okay. Chris to, to do his job, and if he thinks he needs more resources to do his job effectively, then by all means, come before the board, make your case, and we'll, we'll vote on it. Because right now we have a... Um, uh, what do you call it? A hiring freeze, I guess, is, is, for a better word. Uh, lack of a better word. They, anytime a new uh, position is created, uh, we have to get board of legislator approval, and that's because of the, you know, the fiscal issues we were facing for for so many years. Yeah. So, yeah. so what about the sheriff's department? Uh, enough deputies to uh, keep a lid on things? I again, I've I've heard. I've heard people say both ways that we have too many, we have not enough, and and uh, but again, I'll leave that to the sheriff's department. The one thing we do want to keep an eye on, obviously, we want to keep an eye on expenses there. But you know, there, there's some things that I wish we could do with the sheriff's department that would help save some money. As far as the, the sheriff's department, I think spends an awful lot of time transporting prisoners to various, you know, to courts or to to to, to various places. And, and that seems to, I think that wastes a lot of resources. Mm -hmm. I know, I think our county attorney, Steve Button, looked into uh, doing video conferencing for arraignments and trials and that sort of thing, yeah. and the state said, no, we, we can't do that. But that would have saved us. That would have been nice. Mm -hmm. But we're not there yet. So perhaps we can maybe do something like that and yeah. look for, we can realize some savings that way. Well. Right. Right. Leverage yeah. a little technology. Exactly. Yeah. Why not? That's yeah. what everybody's That's doing. For, exactly. Yeah. And for the same reason. Exactly. And for the same reason. So, um, Chad, 
given what has been described as the tribalism in national politics, and we certainly have seen that the members of the tribes don't like each other, uh, whether that's you know in Congress or anywhere else, um, what's your solution for working across the aisle, regardless of what party dominates the county board in 2019? Because when you came on four years ago, there was a switch in, in leadership and who ended up. There were nine seats that were contested elections, the same as we have this year, and there was a big change in who, um, who, who got elected. So have you thought about that in terms of this could be another change election? It could, uh, including myself. I mean, I might be right. out, um, but it's uh, I. I can get along with almost anybody. There's very few people I don't like, uh, and I think I've I've I think the board now, and if if uh, people who attend the meetings can attest to, even you know, I, uh, Dan Fay on the board. He's a Democrat on the board. I'm a Republican on the board, but he was quoted in uh, a recent article, I think, in North Country Now, as as commenting on how civil the board is now. <laughs> Uh, versus how it used to be and we are we're all respectful we're all decent we're all you know we share ideas and we we and that's why we're getting so many things done right because the board is working well together so right now I guess we're kind of a microcosm you know you have this even the, even at the state but certainly at the national level you have this you know a lot of contention but at the local level it's not really there there's not much contention at all obviously we disagree and if we didn't disagree there wouldn't be any point in having 15 people on the board you could just have one if everybody agreed uh, so you do want that would some... be back to your king idea yeah, exactly <laughs> that would be back to the king idea but you know or we, queen, we do, or as queen, the case or queen, queen. Yeah. exactly so we we do have some disagreements and we do debate back and forth and we don't always agree on things but it's it's not a contentious you know um, type of board right now no. And you certainly hope for that in 2019. That's the only way to get things done. Yeah. Uh, you can't if you're arguing back and forth and attacking each other. You're not going to get anything done. That's right. And, and we have real problems that need solutions. And we yeah. have real problem. And and you can see we we've, we've have done some things. We have brought some solutions to the board. Mm -hmm. And it's because we are working well together. Well, yeah, that's that's good to hear. Well, I know we have we have covered this ground, but just just for our our viewers, if what do you want voters to know about you? when they head for the polls. Uh, what do you stand for and, and why would someone vote for you? Hmm. Well, the, the, I guess the, the strength I might bring to the board currently is that I have some experience now on the Board of Legislators, which I think is, is valuable. Uh, and I have some uh, results. The results that we've been able to uh, get uh, the last four years, I think, is, is, is pretty, pretty good. It's pretty telling. So I think you know that experience and those results I think do speak for for themselves, and I think it's it, I just want to continue. Just let's let's continue this for a few, for a few more years, and and then I'll step aside and let somebody else take over. But uh, but I'd like to do it for a few more years. I'm just an average ordinary guy, just like everybody else out here. Uh, I'm not anybody unique or special. There's there's a lot of people just like me. I just feel that I'm I'm trying to do whatever I can do. I have a skills. You know I have I have some financial skills. That I'm hoping I can continue to help the county uh, become a better place, and you know I'm, I have a vested interest. I have five kids, so I, I want those children to grow up and well, maybe have some opportunities here that weren't here otherwise. Thank you very much, Chad, for coming in today You're and talking welcome. to us. Um, this is such an important exercise. Every in in your case, every four years, uh, the county reelects a uh, a new board, and so it's something that. Uh, all politics is local, and local politics is really important in terms of quality of life issues. So we appreciate you coming in and, and uh, talking to us about it. Um, just a reminder to our viewers that Election Day is November 6th. If you need an, abs an application for an absentee ballot, it must be postmarked by the 30th of October. Elections are decided by the people who show up to vote, so make sure your vote counts. Um, these conversations are a production of North Country Matters, which is filmed here in the Fred W. Cleveland Computer Center of the Potsdam Public Library. This show is a civic collaboration between the League of Women Voters of St. Lawrence County, AAUW of St. Lawrence County, and the Potsdam Public Library. Until next time, remember, our North Country Matters. Chet, that was a great conversation. Thank, Thank you. you.